Well, I was responsible for the supply chain and information technology functions at uh, Harman International's consumer division. You know, Harman International is about a $4.2 uh, billion company uh, focused on the audio electronic space. Um, there are three divisions, the automotive, uh, which basically is the navigation and the audio equipment for high-end cars. And then there's a professional group that uh, outfits all the theaters and, um, you know, studios and stadiums and all uh, with uh, sound equipment. And then the consumer side of the business where I was is basically products that we sell through our retail stores, uh, through other retailers like Best Buy and others, which are directly uh, targeted for the home segment. So my responsibility was the end-to-end -end supply chain, except for manufacturing, uh, and, um, you know, the IT function globally. Are there any um, insights you can share regarding how to be innovative, um, especially in light of um, high, high oil, oil prices um, and other risk factors which, are, which make it more difficult to be innovative? You know, specifically with regard to high oil prices, you know, we um, sort of started on the path of trying to address our uh, network back in 2007, early part of 2007, when things hadn't, uh, you know, the oil prices hadn't hit the stratospheric uh, levels that they did uh, through uh, the end of 2007, which is to say that we started looking at our transportation costs on the distribution of the front-end side as well as on the backside. And we did a complete uh, network optimization uh, study uh, for the United States uh, and uh, North America, and that involved uh, looking through all our transactions, uh, every individual transaction, and running it through uh, optimization software, evaluating uh, multiple scenarios. In fact, we evaluated like 33 different distribution uh, network uh, scenarios and evaluated the delta of the costs uh, with each of these scenarios from our baseline. We did it with two different um, service providers uh, with two different sets of software to make sure that we were getting consistent results. And we ended up uh, uncovering a significant uh, you know, opportunity to reduce transportation and uh, warehousing costs, which resulted in a project where we um, consolidated from five DCs for North America to down to two. Uh, and um, that sort of uh, improved our service levels to our customers also dramatically by an order of magnitude. Uh, you know, we used to supply like about 60% uh, of orders uh, took more than uh, three days to reach our customers in terms of transit. And we turned that around to cover 98% of our customer orders within three days. So it was a significant change in terms of customer service. Um, and also, you know, through that process, we looked at our inbound uh, uh, ocean contracts and things like that to optimize, and uh, we went out on a global bid. Um, we looked very carefully. So even though our size of the company may not be, you know, in the uh, billions and billions of uh, dollars in terms of sales, we did a benchmark with some very large corporations. There is a company out in Atlanta that does this kind of benchmarking. And even though our share of the inbound container volumes was probably less than 1% of the total that was being sampled for the benchmark, we were actually above, um, you know, under uh, market. So much larger shippers than us were paying significantly more to move their product from China to the U.S. than us because we were looking at various aspects of optimizing our uh, inbound supply chain and working directly with the carriers and uh, eliminating intermediaries and things like that. So I, I think overall there's tons of opportunity to reduce cost and to become more efficient and to execute a strategy where, uh, you know, especially in a consumer electronics environment, which is a highly competitive business, um, margins are thin and it uh, is very important that... Uh, you know, uh, costs are kept under control. So if one is a little, uh, you know, with a little foresight, one could probably um, eliminate a lot of layers of cost uh, through the appropriate uh, supply chain initiatives. In addition to optimization, um, you know, uh, centralizing some of the uh, DCs and doing some benchmarking and other cost control, are there other innovative approaches um, you can take um, on the uh, revenue side or any other ways to um, be innovative in supply chain management? 
See, there, there are several ways, and I think it all depends upon the situation that the company is in. We have experimented with, uh, you know, speed of increasing the velocity of product by, you know, getting product directly from our vendors in Asia down to retail store levels with some, uh, you know, uh, services that we have uh, taken from the parcel contracting carriers. We have looked at, uh, you know, visibility throughout the supply chain. Uh, one of the things that uh, as part of IT that I did was to, enable uh, complete transparency from the front end, the customer, customer's end, all the way back down to our vendors through our systems. And because we're all integrated, be able to give ATP commitments to our customers, which then obviously improves uh, the ability to fill orders quicker without high inventory. And that uh, also helps your working capital and your inventory turns and things like that. So I think uh, the other aspect I would emphasize is that on the supply chain side, there's a lot of opportunity in using, you know, the black belt techniques of uh, Six Sigma to solve problems, identify problems, articulate them, because one of the advantages with supply chain is there's tons of data available and, you know, so Six Sigma approach being so data driven. Uh, there is a uh, considerable opportunity there in statistically in analyzing, you know, the performance of different segments of the supply chain and then focusing your attention on, you know, process improvement there and uh, getting quantum improvements in scale and efficiency. Any final uh, uh, comments about uh, innovation? Uh, no, I, I think the innovation is uh, dependent upon the, uh, product market scenario of the company, you know, where exactly the company is uh, paying. So, you know, if you look at innovation in a broad sense, uh, it, it's driven by customer requirements and the specifics of the company that's, uh, we, that we are talking about. So every company's innovation uh, paradigm needs to be uh, specific to the challenges that the company faces. And okay. so on the supply chain side, I think, uh, you know, if you look at the various segments of the supply chain and identify where your pain points are, uh, that's the innovation that you need to, I mean, focus that you need to build uh, into the supply chain. Logipi.